Hi and welcome to Carolina Varsity's week two of the 2013 football season. I'm Dale Ross, aka Dale Ross, and this is I'm Matt Morrow, aka Pitman. And so we're here to give you uh, information on week two and uh, what's or what happened in week one and what is coming up in uh, week two. All right, we're going to take a look at part two of our uh, week one recap here. We're going to start with the uh, Independent South Met game, which was played Thursday night at Memorial Stadium. Uh, Independence defeated South Met 49-0. Both me and Dale were there. Uh, a couple of my observations. Uh, South Met, uh, they got the ball. They went, went three and out in their first drive, but uh, they made some adjustments. And uh, the second drive, they drove about 60 yards on the uh, first string Independence defense. Uh, they hit a 45-yard field goal, but... Uh, had a procedure penalty, wiped it out. They tried to field goal again from 50, and it fell kind of short. Um, after that, pretty much Independence decided to uh, go ahead and take over the game. <laughs> when you got the athletes they got um, on the offensive side of the ball, uh, they, they had a 28-point second quarter, which pretty much put the game out of reach. Uh, I was impressed with South Mex defensive line. I thought uh, early on they gave the Independence offensive line a little bit of trouble. Uh, but, you know, as as good teams do, they make adjustments, and uh, Independence did that. And um, they really hurt South Mech uh, throwing the ball. Uh, Kelvin Hopkins had a big night. Um, work pay Kofa, uh, the receiver committed to uh, UNC Charlotte, had a couple touchdowns. I'm very impressed with him. Um, overall, it looks like the Independence is off to a really good start. Exactly. And to Coach Evans. I guess that meant put the pictures up or take a picture of you. I don't know which it meant, but I did both. So your pictures are up from the uh, South Met game. Uh, you know, my takeaways from the game are, uh, I guess, first for the losing uh, team, South Met. Uh, I was uh, impressed with, uh, again, the, uh, the, the fact that the kids uh, knew their positions on defense and were in position in most cases. But boy, were they outmatched, uh, you yeah. know, especially that wide receiver spot. Uh, yeah. they, they were definitely outmatched. Uh, offensively, they've got uh, a little bit of work to go, but it was impressive to see them move against that first team uh, of Independence. But then that also made me go away thinking Independence might have some things they're going to have to work on because when they hit some of these uh, other teams that are, are coming up, uh, they're going to be a little more explosive on both run and pass. So. Uh, you know, independence uh, uh, will need to be, uh, defense will need to be better prepared for that. Offensively, uh, they're dynamite. Yeah. Uh, just like last year in Kofa, very impressive. Uh, I think the, the receiving core at independence, uh, the passing game at independence is in fairly good shape. Offensive line uh, look good. Uh, re wide receivers, uh, you know, independence is not hurting. Uh, and they've got their running backs, so they really have all the packages. And uh, Isaiah looked up, looked up pretty good uh, Thursday night. Uh, you know, Mike, I, I, we could critique him and probably say he shoulda, coulda, this or that. But I thought he, uh, you know, he proved that Independence has got the run, they got the pass, uh, they got the quarterback, the receivers, running backs, line. They've got the whole package. So yes. we picked them as the as the number one offense, if you remember, yeah, in the top five. Did. So. Make sure. Made us look good, so <laughs> make us look good. <laughs> uh, next thing we'll take a look at: Vance defeated Barry, thirty-six to fourteen. Uh, pretty much kind of pegged this as a two to three score type of game. Uh, Vance, like we said, they impressed at the Butler scrimmage, and now people have uh, kind of put them in that second tier of teams here. Charlotte, we'll talk about that a little later. Um, and the interesting thing in this game, they had back-to-back -back kickoff returns, which is um, always exciting to see in mm -hmm. high school football. Uh, what, what, what it looks like is Vance just kind of wore Barry down. Um, they got those big guys on both sides of the ball. Uh, they're much bigger than Barry. And uh, Kyrie and Green scored three touchdowns on the ground for Vance to start this one. So for me, I guess the takeaway that uh, I don't know if it surprises anybody, but uh, this is the kind of game that I felt uh, that Vance could uh, do very well in. Uh, Barry has athletes, and they're, they're very young. It's their sophomore class. So, will be a group that we'll be talking about a lot uh, later this season, probably next season and the following season. Uh, but I thought with Vance's size and their aggressiveness and uh, you know the, the overall that front of that defensive line, 
and uh, and their offensive line. I thought they would be a little more. Um, uh, actually, I thought it'd be a little more brutal, and I thought this game could get a little further out of hand. By the fact that it didn't get so far out of hand, that tells me that Barry maybe across the lines are uh, maybe a little bit better than they were last year. So. That's my takeaway from the game. I, I'm one of those that has Vance in that edge of the, of the second uh, group where we all do. Again, we think Vance is, uh, has an opportunity to do some special things. Uh, next game is Weddington defeating R.V. Kell 24-7. Uh, Weddington, strong defensive team. That tradition obviously is continuing and uh, limiting R.V. Kell to those uh, seven points. Um, Weddington scored in the passing game. Uh, they got behind R.G. Kell's uh, secondary, made some big plays. Um, Weddington, in my opinion right now, is probably the best team in Union County. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Uh, you know, Weddington, uh, always strong defensive, uh, Coach Carson uh, being a defensive uh, you know, coach. Uh, so you look for tough teams and kind of conservative play. And out of Weddington, I've always thought that, you know, if you can limit them from the big plays, uh, you'll do you'll do okay with uh, against their offense uh, because they just they don't I, I think have the uh, the the power to sustain against a bigger four eighteen long drives. Uh, it did surprise me that they scored so much through the air. Yeah, you know, that may mean that if, you know it may mean that those were all you know resulted in big those big plays you try to hold back. Uh, Unfortunately, I didn't find enough stats on the game to really give me a clue, but uh, I, I would agree. Right now, Weddington is uh, probably the uh, the best team in uh, Union County. Sorry, Porter Ridge fans, but uh. <laughs> um, next game we'll take a look at uh, Porter Ridge is coming. <laughs> Richmond defeated Rocky River thirty-seven to thirteen, and we, we kind of figured this could be a, a two to three score type of game. Uh, Richmond in that option offense is real tough to stop, especially up there. Uh, Rocky River, uh, it was close, 17-13, uh, uh, second quarter, but uh, Richmond uh, made some adjustments, slowed down that uh, Rocky River offense, and uh, put up some more points in the second half to uh, kind of get the margin a little, little larger there. Yeah, you know, I'm not writing Rocky River off like I've seen some people, you know, writing them off. This is about what we expected to happen with this game. Uh, after seeing uh, seeing Rocky River and knowing uh, that option, uh, Richmond executes that uh, to a T, and uh, you have to be very disciplined, very fast. It's a, there's a lot of things you have to have to to be able to contain that, and I think probably the the biggest negative for Richmond again, we knew this going into the game, and not for Richmond, but for uh, Rocky River, was uh, their lack of a passing game. Yeah. So, and it, it was reported that they still had some issues with the drops, which is what we saw back there at their uh, scrimmage against State. Exactly. So Rocky River's got some uh, points to improve upon. Not a devastating loss because, again, it's about what we expected. Uh, we just have to see what happens over the next few weeks. Now, uh, Mount Tabor defeated Porter Ridge 26-24 in a game that I, I picked Porter Ridge to win in a very close game. I, I felt like it was going to be a good game. Uh, Mount Tabor is a good team coming from the Winston-Salem area. Uh, made the state quarterfinals last year when they lost to it, North Davidson. Uh, Porter Ridge, we've talked about the new coach, uh, Greg Newendorf from Cox Mill, but they still have a lot of talent on that team. And, um, Hicklin at uh, quarterback, Robbins in the backfield, uh, Bailey at receiver and defensive end. Uh, even though they, they lost this one, I think this speaks well to what Porter Ridge can still do this season. Uh, there's no shame in losing to uh, Mount Tabor at home by two. Uh, I think it was a good performance. And uh, had a couple little things gone their way, uh, they would have got the victory in this one. Yeah, uh, it's about what I expected. Uh, maybe I actually expected Mount Tabor to, to win by just a little bit more. I thought their physicalness and uh, you know, uh, would would give Porter Ridge problems, especially with Porter Ridge uh, not only having to reload uh, players, but having to rebuild a coaching staff because yeah. most of those guys are over there off of uh, 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 51 at uh, Providence right now. <laughs> so uh, I, I think uh, coming out of this game, playing uh, Mount Tabor so close mm -hmm. in a game that uh, I talked with a, a couple of uh, people, uh, that 
a lot of you out there respect, and you know, we all kind of came to the same conclusion that this was a game that uh, Puerto Ridge could have been pushed all around in, and apparently wasn't. So, uh, look, look for Puerto Ridge maybe to uh, to do a little better than I had anticipated this season. Man, uh, two big ones we're going to end with. Allen Creek uh, defeated Dillon down in South Carolina, 27-21. And uh, we, we talked a lot about this one on the boards. Uh, most of us, including myself, <laughs> expected Mallard Creek to uh, kind of go down there and uh, win it uh, pretty convincingly, and that didn't happen. Uh, but one of the things I said was that uh, it's a good sign for them to, uh, you know, struggle a little bit on the road in a tough environment, mm -hmm. yet have the resolve to uh, pull through and uh, pull this one out. We got a couple of good reports uh, from some guys that went down there. Uh, and they said pretty much Mallory Creek wore Dillon down up front. And we've sung the praises of their offensive line um, and their running back Pittman. And uh, it looks like they got the job done against a tough 2A team who's won three out of five state championships in the uh, 2A ranks down in South Carolina. Okay, and so I read, the, the, you know, our, our great feedback from uh, several of the Mallory Creek fans and um, I, I, we know who they are, and they're both very good uh, football people. But I didn't get the feeling the game went quite as uh, the way that the uh, the match perhaps, uh, perhaps quick score law put it. So let me just kind of run that down to you. Uh, you know, after you after reading this, I'm like, wow, this is a game you really, really, really wanted to be at. Okay. Um, Mallard Creek, 82-yard uh, drive, uh, took five minutes, uh, opened up and scored. Um, it was 7-7 at the half. So, you know, 7-7 at the half, pretty uh, pretty tight ball game. Uh, guess what? In the third quarter, you know, uh, Dillon actually goes up 14-7. So, you know, they're, they're ahead. It's uh, tied at uh, uh, 14. Uh, Mallard Creek ties it, and Mallard Creek goes up 21-14. Five minutes to go, Dylan ties it at 21-21. Uh, uh, and it was not until a minute left in the ball game, uh, just uh, just under a minute, uh, that uh, Malachrit scored and missed their PAT.